Hi, my name is Mark Castagnol, and I'm a product manager with IBM for Watson X Governance. Watson X Governance is available on the AWS Marketplace. Uh, today, we're going to get into an overview over what exactly Watson X Governance is. So, you know, to put it shortly, it's an end to end governance platform for predictive and machine learning AI. And it's kind of centered around three core pillars, which are lifecycle governance, risk management, and regulatory compliance. Lifecycle governance means uh, you know, we want to track uh, all of our AI, um, starting from the use case all the way through to all of the models that are developed uh, right from the uh, beginning, all the way through till the models are deployed into a production environment. Uh, and along the way, we capture facts about uh, our models in what we liken to a nutrition label. It's sort of a standardized way to report information about uh, key uh, development facts uh, of our AI. And this works for both predictive and generative models. This also works for models that are running um, in any uh, environment, including uh, WatsonX.ai running on AWS and Amazon SageMaker. Uh, along the way, we're also capturing model health characteristics about uh, our AI. So this helps us to optimize their usage and make sure that throughput and uh, uh, resource usage are uh, uh, within the acceptable tolerances. Now, for risk management, uh, the key is to first um, identify the type of risks that may be applicable to our AI use cases, and, and then actually go out and, and measure those risks. So for predictive machine learning, we have things like bias, drift, explainability. Uh, and for generative AI, there are new types of risks, new types of risks that have emerged, um, such as hate, abuse, and profanity, uh, hallucination, and privacy concerns as well, if uh, prompts are uh, receiving private information or uh, later outputting private information, it can be a huge risk to an organization. So it's important to uh, understand this and uh, make sure we are mitigating them. Now, for regulatory compliance, uh, you know, this is something that's, that's emerging uh, very rapidly. Over 30 countries have enacted some kind of AI regulation and many more are debating it. One of the, the key uh, regulations that, that has uh, been released is the EU AI Act, which is going to be sort of a, a, uh, a standard for a lot of other regulations going forward. We're also seeing regulations at the state level uh, with over 25 US states having already enacted some kind of AI regulation. So let's take a look at um, kind of how a typical use case would flow uh, with Watson X governance. So there are kind of three key components to the solution, which are the model risk governance layer. So this is where uh, all of your business personas would be uh, working. So the, the users who uh, would have a business problem that needs to be solved, um, therefore require the creation of a use case, uh, your model uh, validators, your, your compliance officers, your risk teams, they would mostly interact with the, the model governance layer at the top here. So after a, a use case is created, it can go through um, some approval processes to uh, ensure that all the right stakeholders have an opportunity to, to give their uh, approval or rejection of the use case. And it can also go through a regulatory applicability assessment and a risk identification assessment to determine which risks are applicable and uh, which regulations may be in scope for, for the use case. Assuming all of this uh, gets approved, what happens next is the uh, model development can begin. So we can notify the developer by sending all of the governance metadata down to the, the next component, which is the, the documentation component. So this, this is closer to the actual model development process where um, our data scientists are building and training the models. And um, the, the idea here is to capture all of that information along the way. So as our data scientist begins building their model, that um, development time metadata also flows back to the documentation layer. So again, trying to populate this, uh, this nutrition label, as we called it, with all of the relevant information that is um, being generated by, by the development process. Now, along the way, um, there are also other types of uh, performance characteristics that we can start to capture uh, at the model building time. So th this is where the third component, the evaluation and monitoring uh, tool comes into play. It's going to capture this sort of performance characteristic data like, like drift, 
uh, explainability bias for our models at the development time, and then later we will see after the models have been deployed as well. And this metadata then also flows back to populate our nutrition label with more uh, rich metadata. Uh, and what happens next is, you know, the developer may iterate a few times on, on the model, create a few different versions, and as we're doing this, we're going to get closer to a, a candidate that's ready for deployment to production. Uh, and as such, the documentation um, information that's captured here can also flow back into the governance layer to inform the pre-production uh, validation processes that could be occurring. So we can now use the model risk governance layer to orchestrate the model validation workflow where uh, at the end we'll be provided with a recommendation as to whether or not this model is ready for production. As we start to create uh, deployments of the model, the deployments are also having their uh, performance characteristics captured by the validation and monitoring tool. Um, and this, once a model is deployed to production, should be done in an ongoing way. When we are ready for production, our, our production deployments can be created, and this information again flows back to the documentation layer, where we can now have a full lifecycle view of the entire uh, use case all the way through. And once the model is deployed to production, we also want to continue to monitor for things like drift and bias to ensure that the model performance is not degraded over time. And if it does, we can orchestrate um, some issue management uh, to reduce the, the issue as it occurs. So that really shows how all three of these different layers interact together to provide an end-to-end -end, uh, governance product for, for both predictive and generative AI. So this has been an overview of Watson X Governance, uh, which is available on the AWS Marketplace both as client-managed software and as a fully managed software as a service. For more information, please see the link at the end of the video. Thank you for watching.